Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I want to take a look at dip dyeing some sock yarn into some grape Kool-Aid to see what kind of breaking we can see. Now this is revisiting an old video that I did in the past, but these days I really like to do dip dyeing when I'm exploring the way different food coloring colors break apart because I think that you can exaggerate the breaking that you might see from hand painting or kettle dyeing. Grape Kool-Aid contains a mixture of red number 40 and blue number 1. Now we know that these colors do break, but the breaking is a little less extreme than when we break, say, Wilton's Violet, which has red number 3 and blue number 1. The yarn base we are going to use today is Knit Picks Bear Felici yarn. Um, this is a 75% superwash merino, 25% nylon blend, and is very, very similar to the stroll that we like to use. The main difference between the Felici and the stroll yarns is that the twist in Felici is a little bit tighter and so there's slightly less yardage to this yarn. I guess nitpicks when I called to ask actually about the difference, they described stroll as being loftier, which sort of helped with the twist difference I had already observed. The other real difference between these yarns is that they are, between Felicia and stroll, is that they are actually spun in different locations. Felicia I think is spun in Italy and stroll is spun in Peru. And so since different mills are spinning the yarns, that accounts for these differences in the twist. But I expect that this yarn will dye very, very similarly to the stroll and that we will see the red 40s strike to it really quickly. I am going to allow our yarn to pre-soak in just plain tap water for at least 20 minutes. I am currently heating up eight cups of water and I am preparing to add my four packets of grape Kool-Aid to the dye pot. I chose four because that's the number I used in the other video. Now no vinegar or anything is necessary. There is citric acid in the Kool-Aid packets and there's enough of it that will allow uh, the, dye, the food coloring dye to bind to the yarn really nicely. So now we just need to wait for this to heat up so we can get ready to dip dye our yarn. Our pot is bubbling and I am going to reduce the heat. I have wrung out most of the water from our pre-soaked yarn and now we are ready to start dip dyeing. And oh, this is kind of nice. Unlike other skeins from Knit Picks, this yarn comes with three sets of ties on it instead of two. Um, so you can see already that the color is a lot deeper than what we get with, say, Wilton's Violet. I'm slowly adding more and more. Curious if we will get to the blues at the end. So I did get some blue the the one time I did this. Wow, okay, it looks like the water is just about clear. I might not see those blues. That is funny. Oh, there is the slightest, slightest bit of blue that was left, but I don't think I caught it. That is really, really funny to me. I mean, this color and this gradient is stunning, but man, I was expecting to have a tiny bit of blue that would show up in the end. I guess that there must be so much more red 40 in the pot versus the blue number one that it just absorbed quickly. I mean, the the yarn is taking on sort of a grayish quality there. It is, but I mean, it's barely, barely any blue. That is funny. I guess something else is that the, the acid content 
Huh. I definitely got some bluish patches when I did this before, so I know it can break. But maybe, maybe I'm going to need to redo this with, again and use some non-super wash wool to see. Anyway, I'm going to let this go ahead and go for five minutes and then we will remove the yarn from the pot. I wish I could describe the color that is this white section that isn't really white anymore. Um, maybe it's a very pale gray or like the palest. I mean, I wouldn't call it a blue. I would call it more of a gray, but you know, I don't think that we've really seen a uh, broken grape here, except in the slightest of terms, because this is not very purplish. There's not red in this. It's a tiny, tiny bit of blue. But maybe we need to retry this with using um, some non-super wash wool, because maybe that will uh, slow down the blue enough that we might be able to get some at the end. But either way, I clearly need to get both some more grape Kool-Aid, because I'm now out, but also some more of this fleshy base. The yarn took the color amazingly well, and it even looks like things might be kind of interesting, interesting in the way that the dye was taken up. I can't wait to take a closer look at it. But anyway, for now, oh no, turn off the heat. <laughs> for now, we need to let this cool before we can wash it. Here is our grape Kool-Aid gradient. And again, it isn't really fair for me to call it broken, but this is not pale purple. This doesn't have any red in it at all. Um, <laughs> but it's, whatever happened, is very, very subtle and, as I've said, warrants some replication. That being said, I think that this is one of the best purples I have ever gotten out of Great Kool-Aid. And maybe, okay, to be fair, maybe I'm not giving Great its due. Um, the purple is a very, very deep purple. And if I'm doing a rainbow with Kool-Aid, this is just some clear dish if I'm doing a rainbow with Kool-Aid, I want a bright purple. I don't want a dusty purple, you know? And so it's something, so I'm not really being fair to the deep, deep tones that it has. Sometimes it can almost read gray on yarn, but on this base, it's just a really, really sort of mauve purple. Um, kind of actually, <laughs> All right, this is gonna sound really silly. I was about to be like, kind of reads a bit like grape juice. And then I'm laughing because this is grape Kool-Aid. So that's sort of what it's supposed to be looking like. Oh, that's so, so pretty. I mean, this is just gonna turn into something really beautiful. So all of the color is in our yarn, but I am gonna keep washing it for a bit. There are, is some flavoring and other, you know, just stuff in here besides the food coloring. But since the water is clear, I'm going to rinse it a few times and then hang it up to dry. Here is our finished grape Kool-Aid dyed yarn. I'm not quite sure if we would call this breaking. We do have some other color here on the lightest section that shifted the sort of cream colored yarn base to this almost gray. And so this doesn't have any red left in it, but I'm not sure what color I would really call it. The Felici skein as it comes is actually smaller than the Stroll skein. Um, and so that means that there's more yarn, sort of more volume of yarn in this hank at any given point. But the color is lovely and this yarn is delightful and I would love to play around with it more in the future. I think that because this yarn, I think that because the Felici yarn is sort of wound a much tighter than the Stroll, it ends up even on the darkest sections giving the color a feel like it was almost just brushed on. The gradient overall feels very even, but you see almost like these micro patches of color variation 
on the yarn itself. And potentially this is because, you know, the way because of the way the yarn is twisted that you have more access to the outside of the yarn than the other. And so maybe, you know, as you move it just some of the yarn strikes and it strikes a little unevenly. But whatever it is, this effect is stunning. Since it would be hard for me to limit the amount of acid used when I'm dyeing with Kool-Aid packets, I think I want to try this again with a non-superwash 100% wool yarn and see if we get maybe a hint more blue left behind after our dip dyeing. For the second skein, I pre-soaked 100 grams of worsted weight wool of the Andes yarn which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool and is not superwash. I know that this yarn absorbs dyer a lot slower than the Felicia yarn or Stroll, which has a similar content. And so therefore, if we're gonna see some breaking with dip dyeing, we will see it here. I have four more packets of grape Kool-Aid and I am going to dissolve these into eight cups of water just like we did for the first batch. Now I've already started heating the pot and so once this starts simmering then we'll be ready to reduce the heat and to start dyeing our yarn. Okay our dye bath is at a boil. I am going to reduce the heat and we can start dip dyeing. Now, I'm not sure if it's the removal of the scales from the yarn that make uh, dyes bind faster to superwash yarns versus non-superwash yarns, but hopefully we will be able to take advantage of this and I'm not going in too fast. But sort of as I start dipping in, you can see there you see some blue, but there's still some red in here. But you see that blue? I'm not going in, uh huh. Okay, let's try eek, adding the rest in. And there you can see this time we 100% got some blue and we're able to break the grape Kool Aid into from the intense purple to the blue. And this is because we got the blue to absorb a lot slower and we got the color difference. So I'm now going to let this sit for five minutes and then we'll check and see if the dye bath is cleared. Five minutes have passed and let's take a peek. Oh yeah, that water is clear. I'm going to let some of the water drain and then place the yarn in the pot. And so we still have the deeper the devil purple in there, but the main difference is that we've got this blue at the end and the blue didn't strike all the way through. Anyway, I'm going to let this yarn cool so then we can wash it. Our yarn has cooled, now let's start washing it. Um, in here I just have some cool tap water and you can see that from right away that all of the color is in the yarn. So I'm now going to add some clear dish soap and we will wash this until the water runs clear but we'll wash it a few times with the soap to rinse it all out just because there is some other stuff in here besides the uh, just the food coloring and then we'll hang up the yarn to dry and compare this yarn with the Felici dip dyed into grape Kool-Aid. Here are the two yarns that we dip dyed into grape Kool-Aid. In both cases, we used just four packets of the Kool-Aid and we had pre-soaked either our Knit Picks Felici, which is 75% Supermosh Merino, 25% Nylon, or the Knit Picks Wool of the Andes yarn, which is 100% Peruvian Highland Wool. And we pre-soaked those yarns in just plain tap water before we dip dyed them into the Kool-Aid. On the 100% wool yarn, we could see a lot more of the breaking. We absolutely have a pale blue at one end, 
because the reds absorbed the yarn first and all that was left was blue when we got to the end. With our sock yarn, we have the same purples that sort of go through, but because food coloring dyes strike to this superwash nylon blend faster than the 100% wool, we got a more even absorption of both the colors at the same time. At the end, we have this sort of gray color that is probably related to there being some blue at the end, but it doesn't read blue, it reads more of a gray. And so that's why we dip dyed the second skein so we could have a nice comparison. Sometimes some people say that superwash yarns are, end up being more vibrant than non-superwash yarns. And really, I sort of want to address this because it ultimately depends on the technique. Here we have one superwash yarn, one non-superwash yarn, and they are both extremely vibrant when it comes to the purples. Because both of these yarns were 100 grams, they were each dyed in four packets of Kool-Aid, so they each absorbed the same amount of food coloring. Whereas when you do some, say, if we were to speckle these with the same amount of Kool-Aid, you would see a more subtle color on the untreated wool, the non-superwash yarn, versus the superwash yarn because you would get more discrete specks on the superwash yarn so that would make the colors look more vibrant since the colors would have spread out more on the superwash yarn. And so I hope that this is sort of making sense. It has to do with overall with some techniques um, where you allow the dye to strike only a certain region of yarn since the food coloring will spread out less it looks like you have something that's more vibrant overall. But if you're doing a kettle dyeing technique or hand painting and applying the same amount of dye to the two skeins of yarn, they will end up feeling pretty equivalent and sometimes can be nearly indistinguishable. I don't think I often give grape Kool-Aid enough credit. The colors that you get overall feel a lot more similar to Wilton's Black because you have these deep maroon purples and a lot less blue than, say, when you use Wilton's Violet. But they are still really beautiful colors. If you wanted to pump up the amount of blue, try adding some ice blue raspberry lemonade to your mixture of violet. Because the more blue that you have in the pot, the more that will be left over at the end. So you could end up with some brighter blue on the other end of the yarn. If you wanted to get a really intense punch of blue at the end, then try dip dye, you know, dip dye in the, in the grape first and then turn the skein around and dip dye the other end into say ice blue raspberry lemonade or some neon blue food coloring. And you could get something that looks really, really cool. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and if you enjoyed this dyeing video, please give this video a like and subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. I release new videos every week usually multiple times a week, and you don't want to miss out on any of the dying fun. Thank you so much for watching!